Schmack of Magab, everybody. What's going on? Hey, I want to talk about Toxic Holocaust. Man, I got to tell you, man, I got a big surprise the other day. Uh, Joel Grind from Toxic Holocaust wrote me. He likes the channel. And I was like, damn, because I love this band. Now, my history with the band was I discovered them uh, where my band, Thrasher Die, we rehearsed next to a black thrash band called Devastator. And we and they're all Cuban guys, so we we would play dominoes after we were done rehearsing. And they would, you know, they had a little, you know, stereo system there where they played it through the amps, whatever. I think it was the iPod. And uh, one night they played Toxic Holocaust. And I'm playing dominoes. I'm like, who the hell's this? This is some good shit, man. Toxic Holocaust. And, and it was this album right here, their first album. Um, Evil Never Dies. And I, I had to get it. Actually, I got it on Compact Disc first. Then I got it on... Uh... Now, they did release a bunch of demos before this. That unfortunately, I don't own none of the demos, but I have heard them. Uh, thanks to YouTube. And, it, I mean, this one right here, this is their first official release. And this is all Joel Grind. He plays everything on this album. Drums, bass, guitars, vocals. It's all in one man band. And this album is fucking awesome, man. Uh, Evil Never Dies is probably like the, the, the anthem, the hit. The one that he still plays live every time I go see them. War as Hell is awesome. And uh, Summon the Beast. That's probably my favorite song off this. This is an awesome album. And uh, then they released, uh, well, he released um, Hell on Earth, and he signed it for me. And this is when I believe I saw him open for war. This is the first time I saw Toxic Holocaust, and it was soon after the Devastator guys, that Black Thrash band, turned me on to them. They came with Gore, and, you know, everybody in my band, we all went. To go see this band that we all, everybody in Thrash and I love Toxic Holocaust. And I believe I bought this at the show. If not, maybe at one of the Churchill shows when they headline. And uh, Monster Album. It's kind of a sister album to me to, uh, to Evil Never Dies. Uh, Send Him to Hell. It's one of my favorite songs, period, from this band. And, uh, you know, Thrash and Death. Uh, Time to Die. The title track. It's very like, you hear punk, you hear speed metal, thrash, and kind of like a black metal-ish type vibe on the vocals. Just amazing stuff, man. And then this one right here. If, if there's any album I would tell anybody to get into this band, it would be Overdose of Death. Um, this album is, it's a, a, a little different now. I mean, it does have still the same qualities as the first album, but there's some songs that are a little more, I wouldn't say melodic, a little more hooky, uh, like Nuke the Cross, uh, uh, obviously, and Wild Dogs, the first two tracks. But uh, Future Shock is awesome. Crave Lord, Wars Out, The Lord of the Wasteland, uh, Death From Above. Great stuff, man. This one is It'd either be this one or one coming up that I would recommend you listen to first if you want to get into this band. Uh, but it's different. But uh, then the next one, which is uh, Conjure and Command, this one, it's a little more brutal than the last one. It's a little more heavier, but it's also the lyrical themes. See, before their themes were kind of like, you know, post-apocalyptic. And some satanic stuff, you know, and, you know, it's just, it matches the music perfectly. The brutalness, the brutalness of the music and the lyrical content really mesh together. It's like macaroni and cheese. And uh, this album, lyrical content, I hear more of a, like, you know, like Greek mythology, like the song Bitch. You know, it's like burning a, a, a witch to the stake. and uh, It's a little more, it's definitely heavier and faster and more primal than the last album, but it's awesome. I mean, this band hasn't released a bad album. Then they released this one. 
Now this is one I gotta admit. This is chemistry of, of consciousness. I gotta admit, this one was a grower to me. At first I was like, oh, I didn't know what to think of it. You know? But I listen to it more and more and uh, I love it now. You know? I don't think this band has released a bad album. But this album, you gotta check out the, the, they made a video, an animated video, for the song Acid Fuzz. I mean, you don't have to take LSD. Just watch it and you're going to be tripping on acid. It's so, and it's a brutal video. But, you know, stuff that's going on with, you know, killings and burnings. and It's just crazy. It's just an insane video. And this album is really good. Um, Deny the Truth is probably my favorite off here. Uh, but Awaken the Serpent is awesome. Silence Rat Eater. Um, I Serve. Awesome stuff. Oh, what was this one song on here? On the last one that I really, really like. Oh, I Am Disease on this one. It's amazing. But, hell yeah. Now, the next one. Um, this is the last one. I think, that, well, obviously it's... 2019. It's called Primal Future 2019. It's different. It's still very cutthroat, thrashy speed metal, but it also takes these, you know, kind of different turns. It's vocally very, very different than in the past. And seriously, this one is my favorite one. And I, I noticed that the first time I listened to it, when I listened to it, I was like, geez, man, could this be their best album? Because it was so good, and then I just couldn't stop listening to it. Now, I know I must have held this up and a lot of these albums up on my currently cranking episodes because I listen to Toxic Holocaust a lot. So I'm sure I held this up on currently cranking. And um, this, the, the song, the, the title track in Time's Edge, holy crap, those might be my favorite Toxic Holocaust songs all together. Um, so, yeah, I would recommend this one, too, as a first listen. You know, but the reason I would go with Overdose of Death uh, first, because if, if you get this, then you're really going to love everything before this, and then give this a chance. And it's, it's still, it still sounds like Toxic Holocaust, but it's like it evolves a bit. So the last thing I have from Toxic Holocaust is they did a split with Municipal Waste, another killer band. And um, this is called Toxic Waste, and there's two tracks on here, and it's awesome. We bring them hell in altered states. It's just awesome. And, and, and the Municipal so Waste songs are awesome, too. Uh, Morning Sex and Trapped in Sights. It's a split, and it's awesome. Now, it's funny that they did a uh, thing, because when Thrash and I first started, our goal was to, you know, well, first our goal was to do a split, which we never actually did, and to play this play called The Culture Room. But also, I was also thinking, man, it would be great to open for a band like Municipal Waste or Toxic Holocaust, you know, the, the new uh, thrash, you know, slash punk type stuff. And also veteran bands like Overkill and, you know, uh, fuck, Violence, but they're not, you know, now they're around, but... Um, that would have been a dream. But we did get to open for Overkill. We got to open for Municipal Waste. And we got to open for Toxic Holocaust in Puerto Rico. We played a gig in Puerto Rico, which was pretty much a disaster because there was no power in the place. And then they brought in um, generators. So it was very delayed. But it was an awesome show. I mean, every band played great. And when we were playing... I'll never forget this. And I was so excited because, damn, I'm playing with Toxic Holocaust. This was one of my goals, you know. And this was actually pre-Municipal Waste. So it was like, you know, we got to open uh, that. I think, I'm trying to think, yes, I think Toxic Holocaust was the first band that was on my wish list to open for that we actually achieved. Because Overkill and Municipal Waste, and I know there's a few more that I can't think of now that we open for. Uh, came later, but Toxic Holocaust was the first one, so it was very special. And it was also special because we were playing Puerto Rico. You know, and it, and it was the first time out of 
we played Puerto Rico three times. This is the first time. So it was very special. So while we're playing the gig, I look up and there was a second level and there's Joel Grind head banging to us. Couldn't believe, I mean, you want to talk about a proud moment. And um, so after the show, I go upstairs and I go up to Joe and I go, hey, Joe, you know, I'm a big fan, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, uh, man, you guys were awesome. And I said, hold that thought. And my niece, who filmed our show, I called her, come here, come here. And I go, turn on the video camera. I go, say that again, Joe, <laughs> you know? And he, she turned on the camera, I'm talking, you know? And he's like, yeah, you guys were awesome. So I got it on video. And here, here it is. So that was awesome. Um, now, I believe, man, my, I got a shitty memory, but if memory serves me correct, I don't think they got to play the show, but they played a free show. Or maybe they did play the show because I don't remember. I don't remember seeing them perform that day. So they must have not. But they played a free show the next day, and the promoters asked us to open for it at a club, a free show. But unfortunately, we had to fly back home that day so we couldn't do it you know it was it sucked because it would have been great you know so we shared a bill but we actually didn't they actually didn't play i'm pretty sure man because i'm almost positive that they played a, a free show the day the next day but anyway toxic holocaust rules man they're they're a ruling band i'm so honored that joel d digs my channel and uh i said man i gotta make a video about toxic holocaust you know because i haven't yet I know I've talked about them in past currently crankings, and I know in other things I've talked about Toxic Holocaust. Uh, hopefully Joel will do my podcast or even sh show up on his channel for a track by track or something. Who knows? I mean, look, Will Carroll of Death Angel, you know, he digs the channel. Rick Ross, who was in Death and Massacre, he digs the channel. I mean, and now Joel Grind, it's like, damn, man, I'm just so honored, man. Anyway... Check this band out. If you're into speed metal and stuff like that, man, because they got, there's a, there's punk, there's speed metal, there's black metal, there's a lot of shit going on. And man, the riffage this guy comes up with, these riffs are just so amazing. It's just crunchy and just badass, man. Absolutely love Toxic Holocaust. So check them out. And thank you for checking this episode out. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I got a lot of Toxic Holocaust fans tuning in. And even more important, I hope I have people that are tuning in now that will check out Toxic Holocaust and end up being a fan like me. So, thank you so much, everybody. If you'd like to donate, i got a PayPal in the description below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and Toxic Holocaust. And smack them a gob. Nuke the cross.